Now let's talk about a different way to calculate the Gibbs free energy. This is what we're going to do if we're in a situation where we would want to know the Gibbs free energy, but we can't run the actual reaction. This video just has one concept that we're basically going to teach through an example. Please be sure that you completely understand the Gibbs free energy video before watching this one. I will not be reviewing the basic concepts behind Gibbs free energy here. Honestly, this example very much belongs with the other video, and I only divided it up for simplicity's sake and for reference later on, so use it like that. Make sure that you understand the first video before moving on to this. If you remember back to when we learned Hess's law, this process that we're going to do here is nearly identical. If a reaction can be made by summing many other reactions together, then we can also sum those components DGs to get the Gibbs free energy change of the final reaction. So this is the exact same thing that we did with Hess's law. We get to do this because delta G is a state function. The rules for how to manipulate the reactions to be able to add them together are also identical to Hess's law. If a reaction is reversed, the sign is changed. If the reaction is multiplied, then you multiply the Gibbs free energy by that same multiple. So let's do an example of this to show you how it works. I am going to move relatively quickly through this example. Just to show you how similar it is to Hess's law, I chose to do the exact same set of equations that we did when we learned Hess's law. This time I'm asking you for the Gibbs free energy instead of enthalpy though. If you want a more in-depth walkthrough of this problem, actually go back to the Hess's law and watch how we did that. This one will move relatively quick. So here we're once again going to notice that we have N2O on the correct side, but that there are two of them in the top and we only want one. So we're going to divide our reaction by two in order to get this. Now let's look at our NO2. It's on the wrong side and there are two when we really only need one. And so we're going to need to reverse it and divide it by two. At this point, you may need to do a rewrite to be able to follow through the NOs um, and so that's what I've done here. Or you can just look at the above, whatever problem solving level you're at. Now if we look at all of this and we look at our second reaction, everything cancels correctly, everything adds correctly, and this indicates that we should leave our second equation alone. So that's what I've done here. Now we can see that our nitrogens and our oxygens cancel out, and all that is left is to walk through the math on the delta G to match our equations. So in our first one, we divide by two and make it negative. In our second one, we keep it as is. In our next one, we divide it by two. In our first one, we flipped it and so the sign changed. In our third one, we did not and so our sign stayed the same. Here I've just rewritten everything on the last slide and spaced it out a bit. Now that we have all of these delta G's, all we have to do is add them up to get our final answer. We've gone through, we've added each of the values, we get our final answer of 107.1 kilojoules per mole. Please revisit the Hess's Law video if you need a more in-depth analysis of this problem. In review, we can sum the reactions to add to another reaction. Just like when we added enthalpy in the Hess's Law problems, we can add up the Gibbs free energy values. In the same way that we manipulated equations in Hess's law, we can do it for Gibbs free energy. If we need to reverse the reaction, the delta G changes sign. If we need to multiply the reaction, then we multiply the Gibbs free energy by that same number. And these rules exist because the change in Gibbs free energy is an extensive state function.